In this next video, we're going to adapt to our previous lecture video where we talked about the supervisor.php page. We're going to adapt it to include forms. So typically, users don't interact with a web page by just going to the page and seeing the content. A lot of users will actually type in content into forms, etc., and submit those forms to be able to generate certain content. So in this case, we are going to build our first form. So what's going to look different here is we're going to create an HTML form by specifying the element form and we close this form. There are two methods that are generally used. The first method is post and the second is get. We will be using the method of post. If you're interested in understanding what the difference is between these two methods, feel free to do a Google search and figure that on your own. But just for the gist of things, post is basically going to send all the values from the form behind the scenes, which can then be used later. Inside of this form, we're going to add two different inputs. The first input is a type of text, basically meaning that this will accept text values. And then we could have placeholder. Placeholder is optional. Basically, all it is is this text that shows up inside of a text box. So once I start typing values, this text will disappear, but it kind of informs the user of what they should type into the text box. Then we have the name of the input, and in this case, we're going to give the name of this text box supervisor. This is probably one of the most vital roles of this input, because this is going to allow me to pull the data from my submitted form later on. The second type of input that we are going to use is submit. So submit again is going to have a name of, of whatever I give it. In this case, I give it the name of submit. So when a user comes and types in a supervisor ID and clicks the submit button that is generated using this input, it will send the value here together with the submit button back to the page that I specifically tell it to. Now, if I had an attribute of action, I could tell what page I want this to be sent to. Otherwise, it's going to be sent back to the same page. So essentially what happens if the user submits this form, it's going to reload the page and then start running all the code from the beginning. Just to illustrate a few other types that you can use for your inputs, you have number, which allows you to only enter numbers inside of this text box. Email, password, this would, password allows you to have star, star, star show up instead of the actual text the user is typing. Date, date, time, time. Check boxes allow you to check certain things. Radio buttons allow you to optionally select one of various options. File allows you to upload information to a form and reset. If you click the reset button, it will delete all the values from the particular form elements. So these are all different options that you can use. So let's go back to our illustration here. You click the submit button after typing in a supervisor ID, it will then jump to the top. So what we're going to do is we are going to check to see if the submit, and again here the name is critical, if the submit name from our form, the posted form, is set meaning if the submit button has been clicked, we will run all the code between this curly bracket and this curly bracket. The next piece is that we are going to grab the value that is provided in the actual supervisor text box. So if the user submits the button, we will then look for the name of supervisor. Notice the name down here is supervisor. Whatever the user types in here is associated with this name. So uh, if they type in three here, hit the submit button, this supervisor that's been posted will then be three. So we will then have supervisor equals three. We'll create a variable, store three inside of that variable. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna change our query just slightly. Previously, when we created our page, we had a three entered in right where this question mark shows up. Instead of using a hard-coded value 3, what we're going to use is the dynamic value, meaning a value that a user can type in, and we'll place it here. So this is just basically a placeholder. So any place that I have a question mark, I'm going to say, hey, where there's a question mark, we will substitute it with another value. So when we execute our query, I'm going to have an array of values. So I need to put in square brackets, don't forget these, the values that I'm going to have. So if I have more than one value, I'd have this value, comma, another value, and so on. But in this case, we are going to use the supervisor, which was three. We will take this three, we will plug it into the first question mark, which goes right here. So this query would then be select star from lecture.employee where supervisor equals three. 
The reason why we are preparing and executing the query like this is to prevent against SQL injections because users could type in anything they wanted into this form or change it and manipulate it to accept certain values. And if we don't have a prepared statement behind the scenes, it could actually interpret the query differently than it's intended and could be a violation of security. The rest of the for each is identical to how we did it in our previous lecture. And then one other thing that we're displaying here is rather than the displaying for a specific employee ID, we are actually showing the supervisor number. So if someone types in three, three will show up here. If they type in five, five will show up there, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy the code from the notes pane since we kind of went over this in detail and I will show you what this looks like. So now we're going to come back to our file directory. I'm going to create a new file. We'll call this supervisor-form.php. And we'll go ahead and edit this file. I will then paste the code from the notes pane. As you can see here, this is exactly what we talked about on the slide, just formatted differently and with some comments to kind of indicate what I'm doing with each one of these steps. So we'll come over here to the form. I will type three. I will click the submit button. So essentially what this has done is it's taken that three. It has reloaded this page. It checked that the form was indeed submitted. It will then store three there. It will plug in three with this question mark here based on this execute line right here. It will then loop through each one of these results, grabbing those rows and then displaying the content. So we can see here that the employees supervised by employee ID number three are these following employees. If I change this to two, we will see different employees that are supervised by a different employee ID.